Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is an M40 M43, the Tier 8 American SPG. This one's located on the northwest bourne of Fjords and it's under the command of Huggy9999. Well, he's got the 8 inch howitzer. I know that because the barrel doesn't extend over the front of the vehicle, and well, that indicates it's the 8 inch gun because the 155mm gun will actually uh, go over the front and that would be the M40. This makes this the M43 and that uh, howitzer is capable of doing 1050 alpha penetrating 52mm of armour and it's got a burst radius of 11.1 meters. Well he's only loaded standard ammunition and he's now looking for his firing position. I think he's decided to go over to the shallows at this fording point here. It's a nice little br um, bush there you can set up, but it's not always the best place to be right in the middle of that bush because you are likely to get counter battery. Now, what is this FB4207 uh, doing? He's an idiot. He's obviously a noob as well not a very experienced player you don't do that to a fellow RC that's trolling and two RTs setting up close to each other makes them much more likely to be discovered so he's also very stupid because he's just made it much more likely that the enemy will counter battery both of them okay I wouldn't be surprised if that FV4207 uh, gets destroyed well we've got an FV4202 and he fires around and moves straight away and I don't blame him for moving because if that enemy RT with the both enemy RTs manage to work out where he is he's gonna die very quickly okay he's now aiming for a Jagtiger 88 the premium version of the Jagtiger looks like the FE4202 was wiped out there's an EBR 75 FL10 nearby but he's good, still got a few seconds before he's loaded. There's an FCM 50 ton I think he can hit. Yep, he's lining up on that one right now. Dialing in. Work out where he's going. That's it. He's coming down that corner. He's trying to shoot at our guy. Rounds out. Moves. Uh, yeah, we didn't get to see the hit, but he did hit him for 425. Again, Huggy, you need to watch the shot. Otherwise, you won't work out what the, what you did. This is especially important when you're firing at blind targets, because if you if you fire at a blind target, you don't watch. You'll never know if you hit it. Well, he's decided to go to this chine, and I think that's a much better solution, because he can still hit the enemy territory. In fact, actually, he's decided to go to counter battery. And normally, I'd recommend if you go to counter battery look from above it's much easier to work out where the tracer is and the other thing that the other trick is to press your v key if you press the v key all the visual cues will disappear but it makes it much clearer to see the tracer as they emerge from the enemy rt gun well, he's decided to pull back a little can't get a shot on those uh, enemy down at the south pass he could if he relocated, but the problem is that there's a P44 Pantera in the Eastern Pass. And if that guy comes around the corner, then Huggy could be wiped out. Now he's looking for Tracer over in that corner. Didn't find any. He's got no shot in the EBR. There's another good reason, as I said, that Pantera. Another good reason for being in this spot. Because that, that Pantera comes around the corner, the FB207 is going to die very suddenly. And then Huggy would have made the right decision to get out from that spot. At the moment though, he's backing up, which may, might make him visible to that enemy Pantera if he comes around the corner. Instead, he's setting up to shoot at the... Uh, Southern Pass? No, he's going to have a look at other targets. Can't find anything to shoot at. I would definitely go to Count Battery at this stage. Yep, it looks like that's what he's going to do. So I said, go to the overhead mode. 
Normally you can press that by um, pressing your G key and that takes you overhead the target and then you can clearly see where the tracer emanates from. Uh, press the V key. That's what happens when you press the V key. You lose all the visual cues but the tracer stands out like a sore thumb. Okay, that was um, the EBR 75 FL10 dying. Okay. Again, you can see somebody's firing into that corner. I think that's the FB207. And I saw a tree go down, so I'm, somebody is in there. Somebody is there. I saw a tree go down to the left of where that shot landed. So there is somebody just to the left of that bush. A tree went down after the shell landed, so it looks like somebody is in that corner. If we see a tracer, we'll know that there is somebody there. Just don't think he's looking closely enough. There's the Yank Tiger. He's got a clear shot on him. He's dialing in, rounds out. And... No, I don't think he got any hit. He wasn't damaged himself when you saw that explosion. It's because he actually came out of RT view so quickly. All he saw was an explosion at his end, not at the enemy end. As again, I said, if you if you pull out of RT view and you deny the viewer the possibility of seeing what the damage, what the shell did then obviously we won't be able to do your replays because they're just going to be so boring for tank drivers they wouldn't be able to watch. Okay, he's got no shot the Pantera because the the hill there is in the way. And the Pantera has been killed, so that's good news. That Yak Tiger is a one-shot. He's a splash kill. And again, he's gone back to counter battery. I'm certain there's somebody in that corner. Absolutely certain. I saw a tree go down. Clear indication normally that somebody's at home. And there's a Reveler Reese. He's disappearing towards the east. Don't think we're going to get any more shots on him for a while. He's probably gone round to try and stop the 416 coming down. He's definitely somewhere in there. And I think that was the shot from the 207. And again, he didn't stay to see what happened to his shot. And of course, that means that that shot was wasted because he doesn't know if the enemy RT was struck by it. I saw another tree go down there. So somebody... Oh, there it is. It's a scorpion. It's the German scorpion, not the American one. But the one without the pl with the plane covering. He's just waiting for the load to finish. There's the 207. Now, I think the 207 was close. And he got the kill. This time he stayed to watch. And he did get the kill. There was somebody there. I was right there. The tree did go down. And because he stayed to watch, he saw that he got the kill. Now, if he kept firing at the same position, just kept pulling away, he wouldn't have realised that, yes, the, he was hitting something. The shell disappeared without an explosion. Now, I tend to think that the other RT might be there as well, on that corner. But if he is, he'll probably move. Okay, he's having another look. tree definitely went down just to the left you see the, there's a pair of fir, fir trees and there was a tree right next door to them and that, that was the tree that went down and so I'm pretty certain that's where the enemy was either the M40 moved position or the other one's still there it's a Lorraine 15551 and well the others are now looking for him as well Looks like they're about to go out onto the peninsula. Oh, they found the Rebel Arise. Okay, well, unfortunately, we lost the T-28 prototype in the process.
I had the sneaking suspicion that Lorraine is around that corner and he's hiding. And if they go down the peninsula, they might actually see him. Unfortunately, we've now lost the 416. So that Revelarise is putting up a good defence and it's now four versus two. Unfortunately, both parties are up this end. And as I say, normally during an end game, it's a good idea to get moving, get on the move, get on the move, get down there quickly and help your teammates. You can still win by shotgunning the enemy. And I've done that so many times, even on this map. And I can hear the enemy RT firing and there's no tracer coming from here, which means that the enemy RT must be on the peninsula. Yep, they're indicating he, on the map where he is. He's on the peninsula, the little Italy as I call it. It does look like Italy sticking out somewhere on there. I would say towards the end, not um, this close. Over to the right and where that tall tree is. If I press the V key, we'll see if the tracer emanates from the end. Well, he's decided he is going to get moving. It is the better decision. We can't see the revelry saying now, but... The best thing he can do is get on the move, get down there and give some hand to these guys. They're losing hit points because they're facing a crossfire. The RT at the other end on the peninsula is firing at them from behind. Whilst the Rebel Arise is firing at their front. And now we've lost the Carnarvon to the Rebel Arise. I remember doing this course a while back. And now we've lost the Borsig. Now he could shotgun that Revel Arise if he comes right across him, right in the face. I did that myself just recently in a game, you probably all saw it. I not only took out the tank that was directly ahead of me, well in fact actually I think I hit and wounded the tank ahead of me, and my teammate who was alongside me took him out, but I then went and jumped on an enemy tank, and there's the Revel Arise, lining him up, and that's a kill. And now it's two RT versus one RT. But he is reloading, but he just needs to get a move on. So the enemy RT can't get a shot on him. Now he could go to the cap. If he does, it's going to force the Lorraine to actually react and come to the cap. Oh, he spotted him. In fact, he was behind. He was with the Rebel Arise. And now it's very difficult for the Lorraine to get a shot on him because he's actually in defilade, whilst the Lorraine is not. Yes, that ridge line is protecting the M40, M43 from the shots. And the FV207, if he got off his posterior, took his fingers out of his orifice, he could actually get into action and come up behind that FB207, uh, FB, the Lorraine 15550, but it looks like he's not even prepared to do that. Now, what is he doing now? Here comes the Lorraine. He knows all he's got to get is a shotgun. Oh, yes! What a shotgun on the move! Wins the game. All down to Huggy. That FB207 should be ashamed of himself for not helping. So, very nice ending to that game. Well done, Huggy. And it's the second class tank of a Huggy 9999 in the M40, M43. He got a Reaper badge. He actually took out consecutive tanks with consecutive shots. And he also got a counter battery because he took out both the enemy RT and also a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. And this one, he managed to get eight. But his win eight from that game was 3229, which is actually quite high. Uh, it's super unicum. So let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. Note that actually went to the Borsig, who managed to get 3368. But he didn't get the high caliber. 
maybe he actually damaged one of his teammates in the process and that's why he didn't qualify. The next highest scorer was the Revlerice with 3,123 and after that the Carnarvon with 2,682 and he got a cool headed as well. Huggy managed to get 2,055, he was anonymised on this game and uh, when it came to kills he uh, actually got the second place because the Revlerice got four kills, uh, the Borsig, Huggy and the T44 and the BR75 FL10 all got three kills each. When it came to base XP, he was in third place. The Carnarvon got 1,018, the Borsig got 998 and Huggy managed to get 916. He fired eight shots, got five direct hits, one penetration and six splash. Damage of 2,055, hit points of which 1,291 were at more than 300 metres. He received one hit, it was a penetration, yes, I'm afraid so, that was from the Revel Rise. And he spotted one enemy vehicle, that was the RT, the Lorraine. Damaged five of the enemy, killed three, and did 1,026 hit points of stun assist, or four stuns. On a premium count, he earned 37,910 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 14,758 credits. He received 1,374 XP, got 2,748 for completing the mission and events, and took away 4,122 experience points altogether. So not bad, actually. Two shotguns in the game. Well, sort of two shotguns. Um, one shotgun on the rain, for sure. And the other one was an aim shot at the Revel Rise, but it was a very good one, especially considering he'd just been hit by the guy and uh, just then took him out straight away afterwards. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.